Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to yet another learning experience with me here in my channel, Audiology with Kwaja. Today, we will be discussing about the concept of middle ear transformer. Before we get into the topic, in case if you have missed any of my previous lectures, please find them in the description and subscribe so you don't miss any more. Coming back to the question, why do we need transformers in our ears? You might have found such a transformer in your neighborhood. What it does is something very important and very essential without which working of daily appliances, essential appliances in our home is very difficult. So when this transformer is receiving from the electricity generation side, it receives an approximately 8,000 to 13,500 volts. But when this same current reaches our home, it is only 220 to 240 volt. What happens? The transformer actually converts such a huge uh, voltage into a usable voltage. And this, we call this as step-down transformer because it is, it is bringing the bigger values to a smaller value. But this is not the case in all the time. So we still need a bigger voltage at one point of time. So this is a very familiar household appliance and a microwave oven, which is useful for cooking food, reheating it. But it does not work with only 220 volts it needs much more volts to do its work properly. It needs approximately 5,000 volts to function to do what we require it to do. So here we need something called a step-up transformer. What does it do? When we receive 220 volts in our household, this microwave oven uses the same 220 volt and converts this or enhances this into 5000 volts. So it has increased or amplified the voltage and made use of it. Likewise, now why should middle ear act like transformer? Why should it even amplify? Why do we need a transformer? To know about it, we need to refresh little of our old or basic science class. The composition of a solid, liquid and gas are different. They are three different qualities. If you take solid, the atoms and the molecules are going to be tightly packed. So it is difficult for them to move because the opposition is higher in a solid. When you go to liquid, the opposition is still present, but the atoms and the molecules have a little space around them to move around, but they are not free to move. But in the gas, it is free to move. There is no restriction for the atom or the molecules to move around. So that is the reason we find that the impedance or the opposition provided by the solid is very high and then of the liquid is lesser than that and for gas it is very low. Here is a video, an experimental video that uh, uses the tuning fork vibration to explain how does the vibration changes with the medium. So the tuning fork is now struck into vibration in an air medium and slowly been bring brought into the water medium, liquid. So what happens to the prongs that are vibrating in the air and then it vibrates in the water? In the next video, we are going to compare what happens when it goes inside. That means what happens when it's in the air before it goes in the liquid. And on the right side, you're going to see what happens when it comes out. So air does not have any restrictions for the vibration, so it vibrates. But when it is put into the water, the molecules does not allow a free movement of the prongs. So it is dampening the vibration and when it's taken out 
of the water the vibration of the prongs have already reduced because of the dampening that means in simple terms the impedance was low in the air so it was vibrating easily and when it went into the water the impedance is higher so it cannot vibrate like it vibrate in the air okay so there is a mismatch when we hear the sound is traveled in the medium of air and it reaches the pinna then goes to the ear canal and then touches the tympanic membrane but when the sound has to be transferred into the cochlea you need to uh, you need to change it into a hydraulic energy so your whole middle ear does the job of converting a air energy into a water energy okay so when there is no middle ear what happens when there is no transformer happening when there is no amplification or boosting of the information of the energy happens then it was estimated that only 0.1 percentage of this sound that is traveled in the air will reach the perilymph in that sense we are going to have an approximately 40 db loss which is a huge loss 